I have a problem with the modern format, and I don't think enough people are aware of this problem. I think there's a bit of a veil over some people's eyes with the supposed diversity in the modern format, and I want to provide a counterpoint to that today. I think this is a trend that many people are aware of, and I think the veil that I'm speaking to is simply one where the individuals that tend to play a lot less games, maybe they're going to the LGS once, they might be playing a league or two a week, they may not see this because they get to test out a variety of different decks and they may not be focusing on it, but as someone, as a content creator and someone who plays a lot of modern, I personally think that something has taken over the format and I wanted to talk to you about it here today. So let me know by the end of the video, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree as to the problem. I wanna get your thoughts because I think this is important to talk about, especially thanks to the most recent banned and restricted announcement. Now, Stranger Things memes aside, let's talk about what happened on June 7th. Now, Pioneer and Explorer got their bans. I don't play those two formats, but I'm not really interested in the woes of Winota. I'm more interested in the blurb around Modern. And let's read it out, actually. The Modern metagame continues to show great playstyle diversity with aggro, tempo, combo, control, and ramp all represented in the 10 most played decks. The most played deck, is it Murktide, represents about 10% of the Magic Online metagame and hovers right around a 50% win rate. The top decks show strengths and weaknesses against each other, and there looks to be plenty of room for less popular rogue decks to be successful. Now, technically that's true to a certain degree. There are a lot of recent challenges in tournaments where, you know, fan favorite decks and you know, channel favorite decks of Mill and uh, some Demir Control, Poros Midrange, and random other archetypes up there seeing uh, seeing play, getting up there in the top 32s, heck, even the top 8s. There is room for diversity, but I think that's shrouded in a bit of a problem. And I think we need to set the stage a little to kind of get to that ultimate culmination point. So keep this little blurb of modern in the back of your mind. As we talk about engines, now, Engines themselves are a very vague concept in Magic, but I think in a recent article from Alex Ullman, writer for Channel Fireball, fantastic writer for Popper in general, part of the Popper panel, wrote a very good piece about engines in Popper and how they're kind of taking over the format and how they rule that format in terms of its interactions. But it's a good way to start the discussion here for Modern. What is an engine, Alex says. In Magic, engine is a shorthand for any set of cards that can convert one set of resources into another. For example, Phyrexian Arena is an, a card accrual engine that can convert one point of life toll into fresh card each turn. A uh, Grim Lavamancer is a damage engine that can convert expended resources for, uh, into fresh shocks and so on and so forth. We even get an example of DRC. But I think that Modern has actually been taken over by three distinct engines and i think that is where the problem lies i think the representation of these three engines has shrouded the diversity of the modern format and warped it around the three i think in a lot of ways especially the third and last one that we're going to talk about is the biggest commit uh, committer of this crime and in a large way it might just be modern horizons 2. but let's get right into it with I kind, of, kind of starting things off with number one, the first engine that I think is problematic is the Murktide region, is the Is It engine. The deck itself is not really a problem with Murktide region, more so that it gets to play the cheapest threats in the format and the cheapest interaction in the format. It gets to house the most efficient spells that Modern has to offer in the colors that has historically been the most efficient we've been at splinter twin we've gone to is it phoenix we've gone now to here heck even the storm decks are efficient in their own way and so the deck itself even through the era of luros saw like saw itself really just be unchanged just be a big contender in the format even with companions ruling at the top of the roost so you see that the deck itself has staying power, even in the legacy format where the deck itself was seeing 20-30% representation with force of wills and even more efficient removal spell. It was a no-brainer that a deck like this would be as good as it is, and it still sees that in the modern format. 
Now, number two, the next engine I want to talk about is the Cascade engine seen in Living End and Crashing Footfalls. Specifically, the decks themselves work different, but they work around two cards being Violent Outburst and Shardless Agent, cascading into cards like Crashing Footfalls or Living End. Being decks that play cards over 3 CMC, just so that you don't cascade into anything else, you have these decks that then have colors that can pitch into cards like Force of Negation. So the card, thanks to Violent Outburst, uh, so the deck itself, uh, thanks to cards like Violent Outburst, can operate at instant speed and still pitch some of its enablers, like Shardless Agent, to counter magic to protect itself. Now we're getting into the idea of hyper-efficiency. We had the most efficient spells in magic, and now we're just getting into free spells, where the exchange of resources isn't actually that detrimental when the ultimate goal of two four fours or your whole graveyard coming back it's actually worth the exchange if you manage to get it off and finally to highlight all of this to highlight hyper efficiency and free spells just not being negative in value i wanted to talk about the third engine the third deck archetype in modern that i think is problematic and that's i mean if you look at the numbers themselves the deck itself is represented by almost three different decks five color omnath Blink and Elementals themselves. That's right. I actually just want to talk about the Elementals. Literally, it doesn't even need to be the Yorian deck. It doesn't even need to be the Omnath deck, which is just the 60 card Elementals deck. It can be any deck playing the Elementals. And I think Modern Horizons 2 really pushed Modern in a direction that it didn't need to go. I, I think these elementals themselves do not have enough of a downside, and they're pushing the envelope of what it means to be a free spell. In many ways, the elementals themselves have changed the way that interaction is even thought of. Most of the time, interactions have been instants and sorcery, sometimes even artifacts, but these spells aren't countered by spell pierce. These spells aren't countered by Flusterstorm. Some of the more efficient spells that we have access to, heck, even Murktide Region, is mainboarding two spell pierces. These, deck, these cards won't get countered by that. And even though you have to pitch a card to cast this spell, what it essentially means is the Blink decks that play all these cards like Spreading Seas and Abundant Growths that draw cards, they're never at resource negative. They'll play cards like Renin Six that put a land back into their hand. So they're always at a full stack. They can create the perfect amount of mana and then... Even though they're tapped out, they have resources like Solitude, thanks to pitchable Omnats, where, heck, even Yorian itself doesn't really get cast because cards like Yorian and Kahira usually are put into your hand to pitch to Force and Negation, Solitude, or in Kahira's case, Endurance as well. The effects that you get off of these creatures aren't really that important. The effects that you get out of the companions aren't worth the 8th card. The 8th card is more so an extra draw spell, an extra card for you to pitch to these elementals that essentially play and construct their decks in such a way where this isn't really card disadvantage because you're always drawing cards. I think the hyper efficiency of cards that we've gotten in their removal and card draw along with the free spells combining both aspects of the cascade decks and the murktide decks we've come to a head with the elemental strategy and i think the numbers in in themselves that we can kind of go to as we kind of go through these decks speak for themselves i did a bit of a quick excel calculation of the most recent weekends the last month of modern challenges i took their top 32s and I added the numbers and the totals of these three engines. So let's bring that Excel up right here. We kind of bring that up right here. You'll see that right here, if we look at this calculation, from this past weekend, uh, as of the posting of this video, all the way up to the 13th of May, 2022, the total number of Murktide decks is about 14% out of 256 decks, right? Is... Four per, and then the Crashing Footfalls, Living End, and Other, right? So other styles of Cascade decks, I've kind of put them together, is about 11%, so 28 out of 256 decks. And the Elementals deck, so at Yorian or Five Color, is, is about 21%. In total, out of the last month of modern challenges in the top 32, the top 32, about 46% 
of the top 32s of modern challenges, not even including any paper tournaments or anything, have been won by these, th or sorry, not won, have been represented by these three decks. And I think a lot of people will say, okay, well, Shaft, the other 44% is other decks. What about those numbers? Well, those decks comprise of the rest of the modern format, folks. That includes every deck that you can think of from Affinity to Mill to Yogmoth to Amulet to whatever combo deck or anything like Belcher. All of that is 54%. That is insane because that means that all of these put together shroud the rest of a whole format. And I think we're seeing the culmination of what it what like the the blindness that people have where you can hop into a modern league and play generally whatever you want to do or whatever you want but when it comes to being competitive murktide region cascade and elementals are the best way to go so what's really holding these decks back what's what's preventing people from playing these even more truly it's just the reprint issue it's just the cost of the decks. The decks are exorbitantly expensive to get anywhere with. If we kind of hop back here, look at the modern format. Murktide region in itself is about $1,200. That's USD. Elementals is about $1,800, almost $2,000 in the five color elemental version. Heck, if, you, if we look at Blue Living End, it's about $1,000. Crashing Footfalls is about $1,400 because you're playing, you know, Force and Negations along with the elementals, uh, along with more elementals. And it's coming to the point of price. Don't get me wrong. These decks are good, but don't fool yourself, folks. These decks would see higher play if the top tier or even the middle tier of mana traders could actually rent these decks out. Why wouldn't you? Why would you spend $50, whatever it is, per month on a mana traders account and then not play the best deck in the format, hop into a challenge and play these decks and win with them? Right? Not everyone's going to be playing Burn. Not everyone's going to be playing Affinity. These are decks that you can actually afford, but the people that have the resources to buy into these decks are playing these Blink decks and seeing great results because they are playing the best spells in the format. The problem is that we have a disconnect between the portion of the community that is budget or doesn't play as much magic so they're not seeing the price per return the cost benefit analysis working in their favor of spending two thousand dollars on an elementals deck and instead they're better off just playing the amulet deck playing burn playing affinity in my sense playing mill and struggling through these leagues or maybe in their case they're having fun because you know that's their fill of magic but for me who has only the resources to play those and plays as many games this is where we see the disconnect and now you could ask yourself what the solution is and ultimately it, it would just be a reprint thing i think that the problem would would show itself if these cards were actually reprinted because then the decks would become affordable when they become affordable then it becomes very clear that modern horizons 2 has warped the modern format to such a degree that it is always correct to just play these decks and not everything else you might ask yourself Shaf, as well this is great there's only three decks in the format why don't we build around those decks well as i've mentioned these decks are playing the best cards in the format they are already playing the solutions that you'll have to them. They are already hyper aware because these cards like Endurance not only shuffle a graveyard away, but it's a flash 3-4. Solitude not only is a uh, Path to Exile style effect, um, it is a 3-2 with lifelink against Burn. And these cards just provide so much value. Look at Renin 6 coming down at 2. And although you could say, okay, I'm just going to swing into that doesn't really matter most of the time you're not going to be able to swing into that most of the time they're going to have a blocker on one a lot of times you they might have an empty board you're going to swing in but they're going to have a solitude as backup they're going to have a force negation for your removal spell that's sorcery speed whatever it might be they have an answer to look at decks like murktide region where if you let the ragavan hit you once you've essentially lost the game next turn they're going to be able to play on that turn they played and hit you with the ragavan they play dragon's rage channeler and then just hold up counter spell assuming they made a second land drop as backup these decks 
are playing the cards that you want to use against them. These decks are doing it better than you could ever hope to. And that's what I ultimately think the problem with the modern format is. I, these three decks are homogenizing everything and are providing no room for a solution. There is no solid way to metagame against all three. You kind of just have to pick your poison and see what am I going to face this month? What am I going to face the most this weekend? Let's prepare for that. Is it going to be Murktide? Okay, I'll play even more cheaper interactive removal. I'll play a black deck playing Fatal Pushes and more uh, removal spells, heck, even Doom Blades, whatever it might be to kill the Murktide deck. But then I'm not going to be ready for the Elementals decks valuing me out. Okay, if I want to be ready for that, play, uh, play some Counter Magic, play. Uh, play more uh, Teferis and just play even on advantage with them. But heck, the spells that do that already cost as much as the deck itself. Why don't you just play Blink to beat the Blink decks? And now, obviously, you could play aggro and sometimes they get a little bit lucky, but the aggro decks aren't even that consistent considering the amount of answers that people have to them. What well, Burn is highly represented in the metagame, but you know, the lack of life gain in this format doesn't really mean anything if solitude is everywhere again highlighting the fact that these cards and the elementals do everything let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below it's a bit of a rant for me today but i wanted to bring it up wanted to get it off my chest and i hope this video provided a very synced um kind of version of these thoughts i hope i didn't ramble on too much and if you like what you're seeing obviously like and well hit the post notification bell and do all that youtube stuff we're gonna end the video off there and of course, share this video wide. I, I want the modern community to know that, heck, it's not really as, uh, it's not a paradise as some of us think it is. Remember that even the impossible is possible. And as we ponder that thought, I hope you'll join me next time as we take a glimpse into the unthinkable.